And that is going to be a wrap on a day's worth of sourdough. Sourdough Saturday, how I cook a month's worth of bread in one day. Hey, do you love sourdough? I clearly love sourdough. Would you like having it every day without having to bake it every day? Well, come along with me and I'll show you how I make all of our sourdough bread for the month in one day that I like to call Sourdough Saturday. So come on, I'll show you how I do it. So step one of my Sourdough Saturday bread bake is I take the starters out of my refrigerator on Wednesday and start to wake them up and get them vibrant <clears throat> so they're ready to go first thing Saturday morning. Uh, so I am letting them come to room temperature and then today I will uh, kind of just kind of stir them up. And sometimes you might see where it has like this liquid on top of it. That's perfectly fine. Uh, some people will stir that in. I prefer to pour it off. Um, so I'll pour that off and then stir them up. And then I will feed these starters uh, today. And then I will feed them again tomorrow, which is Thursday and Friday morning. And then... Friday night, I will feed them for Saturday's bread bake. So, so just a quick update today. I fed these starters at 1130 this morning. It is now three o'clock in the afternoon. And as you can see, they have more than doubled in size, which means that they are waking up and um, becoming pretty active. So they should be very good to go on Saturday. Well, good Saturday morning, everyone. Welcome back to the kitchen. It is, of course, Saturday, sourdough Saturday, and I am getting ready to start my, my dough. So uh, I have been baking sourdough bread since 2015, and I got my first introduction to that from Teresa L. Greenway, and I will leave a link to her YouTube down below. I think she does have some online classes, and so I'm using her, she calls it her first loaf um recipe and i have been using that since 2015 so i use it pretty much for everything uh, just a little tweak here and there for whatever loaf that i'm making so here we go okay so to start with um, i'm gonna be doing the artisan loaves first i'm gonna be making two artisan loaves and two sandwich loaves so to start with and so I use this digital kitchen scale, just a little cheap one I got from Amazon. I'll put a link down below if, if you need to look at that. So we're gonna start with a zero scale and we always start with 140 grams of starter. And I fed this last night before I went to bed and look how vibrant that is. Oh, you can smell it, if you had smell a vision, you could smell it, it smells really good. going to add and I use lukewarm water not hot not cold just lukewarm it is 240 grams of water and then just kind of stir that to incorporate it before we put the flour and water in there it just makes it easier to work with and this makes a really shaggy very very sticky dough the next ingredient Zero that out is 400 grams of uh, flour and I use this, it's an artisan bread flour that I get from Azure Standard. ingredients and the last ingredient in this is nine grams of salt and I have this King Arthur's uh, baker salt but for years I used sea salt I just got this the other day and I really like it so The 
best way to do this is always make sure that you start with clean hands because we're about to get our hands in this mess. So that's about as good as it gets. And I always say it's, it's good for my arthritis. <laughs> a big sticky mess so I'm going to try to get all of this off of my hand and I'm going to mix my other three loaves the exact same way so once these are we're done we're just going to cover it and then we're going to let it sit for 90 minutes and then come back and do our first uh, stretch and fold okay so I'm starting uh, the sandwich loaf so I bake a bowl which is the round artisan loaf and a sandwich loaf with each of my different um, starters. So I've started with my French Parisian. So I got the boule made. I'm gonna do the um, sandwich loaf and it has two additional ingredients other than the flour, salt, and water. So it also has honey and uh, some oil. I would suggest using an oil that is light in flavor. Um, or maybe has no flavor you wouldn't want to use like a coconut oil or anything like that so I use just an ex a cold pressed extra virgin olive oil I knew I needed about 600 grams of starter today for these bakes so I fed my starters last night a one to one to one ratio of 150 grams of starter 150 grams of water and 150 grams of flour to get 300 grams of each starter for today's base because I'm using roughly 150 grams of starter in each loaf. So 325 grams of water, 20 grams of, and this is just raw natural honey from Aldi. And the different flavors of your sweetener, and you could use any sweetener in this, sugar, sucanad, but whatever sweetener you use is gonna affect the flavor of this bread too. And then 25 grams of oil. I said I'm just using a cold press extra virgin olive oil. Probably would prefer an, a light tasting olive oil, but I don't have any. Good morning, dear. What you doing, buddy? Doing sourdough Saturday. Making all of our sourdough breads for the month. Oh good, that's gonna smell good today. It is. All right, so I'm going to get this all mixed up and get this settled, and then I'm going to work on the other two. Um, it's been 30 minutes since yeah. we're letting our dough uh, do its thing, and it's time for the first stretch and fold on the sandwich breads. And as you can see, this dough has developed a little bit, and so um, the main thing with is that this dough is very sticky, so I'm going to wet my hands. So the stretch and fold is just that. You pull up one side of the dough, and you stretch it out and fold it over itself. And as the day goes on, this dough will, this, the glutens will develop and it'll get less and less flimsy um, and more into a working dough. And so, and then I kind of just kind of spread it out a little bit, just kind of helping the gluten do its thing. So, so that was the first stretch and fold of the sandwich bread. And in an hour, um, in 30 minutes, I'll do this again for these, but I won't film that. And then in an hour, I will stretch and fold the artisan bulls, and you'll see that kind of hour long, hour and a half long development of that dough. So we'll be back. Okay, it is now 11:15 in the morning, and I am doing the first stretch and fold on my artisan bulls. Um, this is the French starter. So we'll see how it's developing. Well, it's looking pretty good. You can see that. And again, it's the same procedure as with the um, sandwich loaf. So we're just gonna stretch it 
and see it's a different you can already see after an hour and a half it's a different consistency than that uh, <clears throat> sandwich bread because that's a, a higher hydration dough because it has more water in it um so it's that's why it's a looser dough this is more of a sticky firm dough uh, but again the stretch and folds are exactly the same and that's good and then we will see this dough again in an hour and a half for fold number two. Uh, stretch and fold number three on the um, sandwich loaves. So here is the second starter. Right. As you can see, the dough is developing quite nicely. You know, and I think you could probably use whatever stretch and fold method is comfortable to you. This is this is what I learned, so this is what I do because it, it works for me almost every time. So that is fold number three. Okay, we are on our fourth and final fold of the sandwich loaves. Uh, looking pretty good. So we will do a. Uh, oh, yeah, see, look at that. It's looking pretty good. So we will uh, let that. That's it for about a couple hours, and then we'll come back and put them in their loaf pans and, and let them rise until they bake this, this evening. Okay, we are on fold number two for our artisan bowls, and it has been an hour and a half, so we're gonna see how this dough is looking. Slide that camera bug just a little bit. Man, oh, I wish we had smell-o-vision, because man, that smells really good. So that is it. We will see this again in another hour and a half. Okay, it has been two hours that these have been uh, left to rise. And so I'm about to shape them and put them in the bread pans to do their final rise for a couple of hours uh, before they bake. it out onto my floured work surface. And you can shape these any way you'd like to. This is just the way I do it. So I'm gonna just roll it up into a ball and tuck the tuck it in. Tuck the ends in, and then I'm going to put it in a greased 10-inch uh, loaf pan. Bread number two. This is the French starter. And this is the one that I will put the bread topping on, just so I remember it when it comes out of the oven. And then we will just let these sit until they, um, till they double in size or they reach the kind of top of the pan. They'll kind of rise and dome over like that. And then we'll bake them. Okay, so a lot's going on right here in the, um, in the evening. It is uh, four, about 4.15 or so. Been baking, I mean, been started this bread at 
about 8 30 9 o'clock this morning right in the middle of the alabama tennessee game right now tennessee is winning 21 to 7. who knew um so the uh sandwich loaves are just about ready to go in the oven i'm preheating that now for those and i'm about to shape the bulls and put them in their bannetons so we'll get a get a look at that okay so i'm gonna I start by flowering my work surface here a little bit so that the dough doesn't stick to that. And I am going to be putting them in these brown bannetons uh, to do their final rise before they bake. This part just really takes uh, practice and I'm still not really that good at it. So um, just kind of try to stretch the top of it so that it, um, it just forms a nice little smooth top on it. All that and so now these will sit and probably rise for a couple of hours depending on the temperature in here which I'm going to put them on top of the stove so they'll probably rise pretty quickly because I'm about to bake uh, the sandwich loaves and uh, that'll heat up that'll heat up the oven. Okay so our sandwich loaves have risen to they have domed over their baking pans as you can see and so we're about to put them in the oven needs a little bit more time to preheat and uh, as soon as that does, I'm going to be baking them, of course, in these pans and on top of my baking stones. So we'll be putting those in the oven here in just a few minutes. And I am actually going to score these, um, particularly this one, because I see uh, uh, some air bubbles in there. And so I don't want it to blow out the side. So I'm going to actually take my lawn and score this, which is just really a razor blade. So gonna do a little score right down the middle and that just kind of lets the air or the gases escape out of it during its initial oven rise so that it doesn't blow out the side and sometimes I score them and they still blow out the side so I'm hoping it doesn't blow out the side on this one but we shall see I think I need to change my razor blade don't really think I need to do that one but I'll do it just just in case just give a little score down the middle Let's see how that does all right and there it goes so I am going to be you know, 20 to 25 minutes so here we go the oven Okay, so we had company while the breads came out of the oven, so I wasn't able to film that. But here are the finished loaves of the sandwich bread. They both turned out quite nicely. No blowouts anywhere, which is awesome. Okay, we are in the home stretch. The last two breads are uh, ready to go in the oven, so I'm about to turn this one out and score it and put it in a 475 degree oven with a lid on the top for 15 minutes and then I'll take that off and cook it for an additional 20 to 25 minutes. Right, 
we're going to see what our oven spray looks like. Hopefully it's good. Cross your fingers, everybody. All right, very exciting. The last bread is about to go in the oven, and the Tennessee-Alabama game has got two seconds, and Tennessee made me are gonna kick a field goal to win it, which is crazy. So here we go. Oh, good on Tennessee, just kicked that field goal and won the game. How about that? Boy, my Alabama folks at home are not happy right now, I can oh, tell you that. They yeah, they did. Somewhere in Locust Fort, Alabama, so somebody's not happy. Okay, the last bread. Let's check its oven spring. Ooh, that looks good. Whew. And that is going to be a wrap on a day's worth of sourdough. Sourdough Saturday. How I cook a month's worth of bread in one day. Okay, the final step in my sourdough Saturday bake marathon is... Um, I am going to be cutting these breads in half because it's just uh, Jim and I. We're the only ones on um, in the household, so we're the only ones to eat bread. So if I if I left the loaves whole, uh, they would likely mold before we would have a chance to eat it all. So um, I'm going to cut them in half, and then I will freeze them uh, all in in the halves, and then when we are ready to eat them. I just take them out of the freezer. I allow them to come to room temperature, uh, to thaw at room temperature. And then they're just like um, eating them right out of the oven. Um, <clears throat> so we use the sandwich loaves for toast. And when I toast it in the oven, uh, it's just really good. And I think you would like it. Uh, I hope that you'll give it a try. And uh, comment down below and let me know if you do give it a try. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to follow along with you guys and, and see what's happening and I hope this video has been helpful to you. So I'm going to get to putting these in the freezer. And also I use this Victorinox bread knife. I have a bread knife that came with my um, Wooskoff um, <clears throat> knife set. And, and while it's a good knife, uh, this Victorinox, uh, I just have found it's a better better knife for slicing bread. For one, the, the blade is a, a, a lot longer. And so I can kind of, especially in these larger breads, uh, can kind of get, and I just, I just like the way it cuts. I like the handle. I like the way it feels. And um, I believe I purchased this um, off of Amazon. And so I'll leave a link down below to uh, to this knife if you're interested in that. Sandwich bread. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it smells so good too. Oh yeah. Mm, very nice. Very nice. You can see it's really it's very soft. Very soft bread. So yeah, and each one of these halves. Uh, usually will last uh, Jim and I about about a week, uh, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little longer, depending on how much bread we eat. So um, you can do the do the quick math here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven halves um, and a quarter because we ate some of this last night uh, when it came out of the oven. So we'll probably continue to eat on this the rest of the week. Um, so say seven halves that I'm putting in the in the freezer. So that could be more than a month because I actually do have um, a couple of halves uh, still in the freezer from last month. So and sometimes I uh, I bake extra because if the neighbors come by, I'll give the neighbors um, a half of bread and and uh, kind of share with that building our little community here. So um, so you can see this uh, like I said, that is a month's worth of sourdough. Um, for us here at Two Turtles Homestead. Okay, so there we have it. 
a month's worth of sourdough going in the freezer. Thanks for tagging along, and, and if you like this content and you got something out of it, um, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and follow us, follow us on our journey. So I'm going to get to putting these in the freezer, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.